harmed yourself. So do not like it for your brothers just as you would not want that they should harm you. So do not cause them harm. The prophet said, None of you is a believer until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. As for Dirar, it occurs from the two parties. If someone caused you harm, the best thing is to receive it by avoiding revenge and harm. You should rather employ forgiveness. This, should, this would spread love among the people, and the one who was forgiven would become your prisoner and would always be shy of his action. This is an important principle among the principles of character. In regard to dealing with the people, it is necessary one should avoid causing harm regardless of whether it, it emanates from firm, firstly, or from him out of retaliation against whatever harms him. A Muslim should adopt this way of life and become beloved in the sight of Allah and his creatures. Hadith 33 reported that Allah's Messenger said, If the people were to be granted their claims, people would claim the wealth of other people and their blood. But the honours of proof lies on the claimant and oath must be taken by the one who rejects the claim. This hadith is a very important one. It is a crucial rule of, among the principles of adjudication. The Prophet said, if the people were to be grant, granted their claims, that is, whatever they claim, the claimant is the one seeking for something in the land of others. When two disputants, disputants approach the judge, he should ask the both of them, should ask the both of them which of you is claiming that he should start with him because the two disputants comprise of the claimant and the defendant he should begin with the claimant because he is claiming what is contrary to a basic thing As for the defendant, he remains upon the basic rule and freedom from liability. So he should say, which of you is the claimant? Or he could remain silent till the claimant starts. He should not say, oh so and so, what do you have to say? This could be feared to be partiality. Then after the claimant talks, he should turn to the defendant and ask him to respond to the claims of his opponent. These are the foundations of adjudication. If the defendant confesses, the issue is over and, uh, and judgment should be passed upon him. But if he rejects, then evidence is requested from the claimant. Proof is what explains the truth and clarifies it. It is the testimony of evidence in regard to the authenticity of what he is claiming. If he provides honest proof, verdict is pronounced against the defendant according to the testimony. But if he does not provide proof, the defendant should be asked to swear to negate what his opponent is claiming against him. He, if he abstains and refuses to swear, judgment is passed on him, but if he swears, he is free. This is the procedure of judgment in Islam, perfect, impartial, and easy method. In this hadith, the pro pro Prophet said, If the people were to be granted their claims, men would claim the wealth of a people and their blood. Their plaintiff may claim something big like claiming that his important committed murder and so he is requesting for implementation of the laws of retaliation or he is requesting for wealth 
which may be large or small. He should not be given his claim, because if this door is opened and everyone is given what he claims, corruption and transgression, transgression against the people will spread. Everyone who is biased against another may lay claim against him, so it should not be accepted from him due to mere claim. Even if he is the most truthful of mankind, it will not be accepted from him unless he provides proof. As such, the prophet said, but the onus of proof lies on the claimant, is that the he should provide witnesses because he is claiming what is contrary to the basic thing, freedom of responsibility. So he will be requested to establish the proof. If he provides the proof, judgment should be passed in, the f in his favour against the defendant according to the proof because it establishes the truth. However, if he cannot produce proof or says, I don't have a proof or he presents an invalid proof, its presentation is just like its absence. So the judge should turn to the defendant if he confesses. He, he is judged according to his confession, but if he rejects and says, this is nothing with me, he should be asked to swear by Allah in negation of what his opponent is claiming against him, that he is innocent of that. If he swears in the name of Allah, he will be left because the side of the defendant is stronger. The basis and freedom of responsibility supports him, so the oath from him would suffice. If he swears, he will then be freed and the matter comes to an end. Hadith 34 Please with him said, I heard Allah's messenger saying, Whoever amongst you that sees an evil should correct it with his hand. If he, if he is unable, then he, with his tongue. And if he is unable, then with his heart, and that is the weakest level of faith. Enjoining good and forbidding evil is one of the fundamentals of Islam. It is one of the aspects of Islam because rectif rectifies the society. Is what Allah and his messenger have prohibited of saying. Actions and conducts, it was named Munkar because the natural instinct and sad intellects uh, bore it have commanded it it was named because the human natural instinct and sound intellect recognize it this is an important aspect of Islam Allah the exalted said